All right, so I know that either you, because you know, you're you're very stupid, or or maybe a person who you know, maybe they're very stupid. They waste so much time, bro, on these like tycoon simulator games. You know, you know those games where like you press a button, you get one cash, and then for that one cash, you can buy another thing that gives you ten cash, and then you can buy another thing that gives you a hundred cash, and you keep going and going and going. And there's no end goal in these games for, for most of them, right? Some of them are well designed and have a good ending, but then most games are just there to keep you hooked, addicted, and to spend as much money as as possible like look at this bro animate like why why do you think tycoons are so popular so popular like genuinely the tycoons have been around i think when roblox just first started and they're still here what the hell like what is this so my goal with this video is just to show you that literally even if you're a baby you can make this i'm not even joking even if you're a little child even even if you have like a some like i don't know three-year-old sibling or whatever you can sit them down on the computer right make them like type something and they might end up making an incremental game they might end up making some simulator right <laughs> who knows so the way that i'm thinking we can do this right is i want to opt in for the easiest and quickest method of making the game because obviously if you say like oh but but you know what if i want to make my game look good well then yeah obviously it's going to take some time and some skill i'm not denying it i'm just saying that the main gameplay element of these incrementals is insanely insanely easy to make so i'm just going to go the easiest route and make the worst looking game you've seen but with you know incremental elements so the very e simple way for me to do this honestly is just to make a screen gui make a frame i'm gonna like yap on right now and you might not even really fully understand everything that i'm doing but this is just I'm, I'm just doing this for the people who want to copy me okay if you're just sitting there you know just watching just for fun i don't know i don't know why you would but if you're just sitting here you're like oh i wonder how this is gonna work all i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna make a bunch of user interface right i'm gonna make a bunch of buttons and then when the player clicks that button they own the button which i know might not make too much sense right now but each button will give the player a certain amount of cash per second and then every single button will you know therefore cost more than the previous button so what I'll do here is I'm going to add a scrolling frame inside of this frame, okay? I'm going to set this size equal to like, I don't know, 0.1. I'm going to scale it over here like so and um, put it around over here. I'll probably set the background color to be also green, but like very dark like so. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll add a folder inside of the scrolling frame and inside of this folder, I'll add a UI grid layout. How these scrolling frames work basically is that you can like add items inside of them and then these layout items, right? So there, there's multiple. There's grid layout, list layout, page layout, table layout. These basically determine the order in which items are being laid out. You can have them as a list or as a grid or as a page. Now, in theory, we probably want to have list because list, you know, has like one thing, then another thing, then another thing, which might be what we want because grid is more like in a grid position, right? It makes sense. The thing here is that the grid allows us to change the size of every individual item, but the list layout, again, this could be something that I'm getting completely wrong because I barely use the scrolling frames, but like it doesn't really give me the option to change the size size of each individual frame but the grid layout does so let me show you what i mean real quick let me make a frame okay very basic very basic frame and then i can set the cell size right now it's using offset i want it to be using scale i can set the x to be 0.1 like so and i can set the y to also be 0.1 or maybe let's see 0.05 because you see right now this is just changing the, the shape of the item right uh yeah sure let's make it like that Offset is zero. Oh, never mind then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then 0 0.1 scale. Um, and then for the X, we could do like 0 0.5, 0 0.7, maybe. Okay. The horizontal alignment will be at center because I don't want it to just be at the left. Like this looks kind of bad, right? So it's going to be at the center and the fill direction will be vertical, meaning that whenever I add a new frame, it's going to go here, right? Look at that. Very nice. Obviously, a small problem is that they're like <laughs> not that far apart as we want them to. So I can just set them to be like 0 0.01 in scale or something or like 0. I don't know, 0 0.04. And just real quick, I, I don't like the fact that it's basically touching the top of this like scrolling frame. So I can add a UI padding to the scrolling frame. And then for the top, uh, I could just add like a 0 0.01 or something. Nice. Yeah. And so now whenever I add a new frame, it's going to look like this, right? So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now, I'll be honest, I'm going to be kind of lazy here, but I just want to add a bunch of like stuff to this frame i know i should be making this look good and then probably scaling it and then doing this and that and blah 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 but like i said i just want to do this quickly okay i'm, I'm, I'm just imagining as if i'm like trying to speed run this okay so this will be our button okay and then this button will basically be responsible for purchasing something okay so text scaled let's make it bold and let's just say buy like so awesome and then i'll just add two text labels right so we're gonna have a text label over here and then one more text label over here. And so this first text label will determine the cost, okay? And then this second text label will determine the amount that we currently have. 
And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just set their um, text color to be like a little gray. Just cause I don't know, it feels like when something is gray, it's like not meant to be clicked on, you know? But like when it's like this big buy button and like, you know, you have your mouse over it and you, and you can like press it. It makes a lot more sense that this is meant to be a button well, these are just meant to showcase numbers. And the last thing I want to do with this frame is to basically give it certain values that make us know like, okay, this frame is going to give us this much. So we can use something called attributes. Basically, every single item has different properties, right? But every single item has the same tag and attribute properties. Everything has tags and attributes. Server storage, folder, scrolling frame. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, everything has them. Tags are basically like just words you can put on like items that let you know what those items are meant to be right so for example if i have like a weapon i could give it a tag called weapon and so then we can check um if this item has a tag called weapon right and attributes are basically like tags except you can actually add values to those tags as well so i could say cost right and then i can make it equal to a number so by default this cost will be one then i can make an attribute called amount and then it's going to also be a number and by default it's going to be zero and then i'm going to make a thing called cash to give which will also be a number, which again, for this specific thing, will be one cache a second. Yeah, and so now that we have the frame fully finished, at least I hope it is, we can take this frame, right? We can copy it, and then we can paste it inside of replicated storage. And so this is where we need to make a local script. This is going to be very simple, okay? I'm going to make a variable that's going to get the frame. Okay, so local frame is equal to game, replicated storage, wait for child, frame. And what I want to do is I want to basically take the frame, right? I want to, well, initially add the frame as it is, and then I want to add like 50 more frames that are going to have their values changed right so basically uh their cost is going to go up by like i don't even know how much do we want the cost to go up by like five times or something sure and then the cash to give could be increased by like three times yeah so what we could do is we could just say local um current cash and local current cash to give so i'll explain what these are going to do in a bit we'll just leave them blank so we're going to take this frame we're going to clone it and then we're going to parent it inside of this folder which actually we probably should make a variable for that as well so Local folder is equal to script.parent, wait for child scrolling frame, wait for child folder. And so then I'm going to say frame clone.parent is equal to folder. And actually now what we can do is we can just set the current cache to be one and current cache to give equal to one. And actually I'm just realizing it shouldn't be current cache, it should be current cost, right? So current cost is, is one and current cache to give is one. The idea behind these variables is that basically whenever I add a new frame, I'm going to, you know, obviously modify their cost and their cache to give, and then I'm going to change these variables to be the new like max cash to give or maximum cost because then we can take that variable we can multiply it by five or three or whatever numbers we want and then give that new value to the next frame that we want to make right yeah and so then all we need to do really is just make like four, 49 more frames okay so <laughs> four i equals to one 49 do we can make a new frame right so local new frame is equal to frame clone we can set local new cost equal to current cost times um i don't know how, how much we, do we want this to be do we want this to be times by five or i don't know Let, let's do five sure and then local new cash to give which honestly we can just times this by like two current cost times two and so then this new frame we're gonna set its attribute we're gonna set the cost equal to the new cost right and then we're gonna set the um cash to give equal to the new cash to give and then the last thing we gotta do is just set the current cost equal to the new cost and then the current cash to give equal to the new cash to give and then we also need to connect the text button to ensure that like we know when it's being pressed and then also you know do something when it's being pressed so new frame wait for child text button dot activated connects function and so now this is where we run into a dilemma because we're you know we're dealing with costs and everything but like the player doesn't even have any cash like there isn't a thing that lets us know how much cash we actually have so what i'm gonna do is i'll add a basic text label okay size 0.1 sure and i'm gonna set it to be over here okay so i'll just stretch it out like so and put it over here there we go i'll call this total cash like so let's make it bold um let's make it scaled let's set the text by default equal to um I guess one cash because you know we want to buy the first uh like generator background transparency to be zero and then maybe the text color to be this nice like minty green there we go and then also what i'll do is i'll make an attribute inside of this total cash right so 
which I'll call cache, right? Very simple. And I'll set this equal to a number, which by default will be equal to one. And then inside of this total cache, I'll just do a quick thing that's going to say, you know, script.parent dot attribute changed connect function. And it's going to give us the actual attribute. So then whenever our attribute changes, which we know that it's, it's going to be cached because it's the only attribute we have for this text label, we can say script.parent.text is equal to, it's going to be a dollar sign, it's going to be a dollar sign, and then we're going to add on to the dollar sign, whatever value this cache attribute has. So script.parent gets attribute cache. And so I can just really quickly check if this actually works, right? So let me go to our um, player, player GUI. And then let's see if I change the attribute. So if I set this to two cache. Oh, yeah, awesome. There we go. And so now we have to actually get the variable for this total cache, I guess, as well, right? So local total cache is equal to script.parent is equal to script.parent.parent wait for child total cash there we go yeah and so now all that we have to do is just check whether the um, actual cost of this frame is less than or equal to the total cash that our player has and so i will say and my voice is a little raspy right now but <laughs> if total cash um gets attribute cash is less than the new frame get attribute cost get attribute cost then we're going to return end but then if it isn't less than then we're going to say but then if it isn't less than then we can say total cash set attribute cash and we're going to set it equal to the current cash attribute so get attribute cash minus new frame get attribute cost and then we're going to say new frame sets attribute amount and we're going to set it, and then we're going to set it equal to uh plus one right so new frame gets attribute amount plus one awesome yeah and so then what we're going to do is while task dot wait one second so every one second we're going to loop through every frame in the folder right so for i comma v in folder get children do we also need to ensure that this v is an actual frame because we don't want to be going through the grid layout right so if v uh is a frame right or i should say if not v is a frame, frame then continue end meaning just skip over to the next item but then and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the cache to give amount of the frame we're going to get the amount of the frame we're going to multiply the two and then add that total to our total cost so local cost local cash we're going to set this equal to v gets attribute cash to give and then this will be the same except instead of cash to give it's going to be the cost or i suppose actually we could probably do all of this in one line <laughs> so i could say this i can multiply it by this yes local cash is equal to this okay very nice and then total cash sets attribute cash and we'll set it equal to total cash gets attribute like i said cash plus cash <clears throat> yeah, awesome. And I'm thinking really quickly, one small issue that we forgot to account for is that, um, or it's not really an issue, right? But like, whenever I actually make a new frame, I completely forgot to also update these text values, right? Because right now, like, sure, it's changing their attributes, but it's not actually changing like their text. So I should probably go and do that. Yeah, so I'll say new frame wait for child cost dot text dot text is equal to dollar sign dot dot new cost like so and then here i'm gonna say new frame wait for child amount dot text is equal to new frame is gonna be equal to new frame get attribute amount and phew okay okay i think we haven't even tested this game yet um but i really do hope that this works in one try okay okay small issue uh our <laughs> the amount is zero we haven't bought it yet but it's still increasing the cash interesting why is it doing that okay wait so if i check this frame right let's see oh interesting it doesn't have any attributes that is so weird wait you know what i just realized i'm so stupid i forgot to set the new frames parent oh oh okay okay wait <laughs> new frame dot parent is equal to folder i completely forgot to do this okay you know what how about this right how about this what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set a thing called low local counter i'll set it equal to one okay i'm gonna say local starter frame is equal to frame clone i'll set starter frame dot uh, name equal to zero okay and then say starter frame dot parent is equal to folder because what i think it's gonna do is depending on like its name it's gonna sort it by the, the name basically so i can basically say new frame dot name is equal to counter and then right after that set counter plus equals one or actually no you know what instead of changing the name we could just change its layout order right because i completely forgot about this but almost every single gui has a property called layout order so we can just set its layouts so we can just set its layout order equal to zero and then instead 
instead of setting the name here, we can set layout order, like so. And so if I play the game right now, hopefully... Oh, that's really interesting. Look at that. So when I change the thing to horizontal, so the fill direction of the grid layout, it goes back to being normal. Interesting. Okay. Okay, you know what? So yeah, let's... um. <laughs> again, <laughs> there are a couple bugs which, you know, might need to be fixed, but... All I need to do right now, all I really want to do right now, is just change this thing's fill direction to be horizontal. And then just understand why it's even increasing the cache, right? So while Tassad wait, it's, it's going through these frames. It's getting the cost and the cache to give. Oh, I'm stupid. It's not cost. It's amount. Okay, that should hopefully fix the problem. And I can't even buy it. I mean, okay, wait. Does this work? So if I print one, right? Just for example, I can print that, whatever, right? Oh, interesting. Look at that. So it works for these. Oh, not for the first one. Oh, I fully understand why. Bro, I'm so stupid. I, I'm supposed to make this connection for this starter frame as well okay i'm too lazy to check if this works but please there we go incremental game finished <coughs> <coughs> yeah just a you know, four thousand you know ten thousand nothing big nothing fancy yeah so i mean okay i probably should have made this scrolling frame a little bigger but as you can see we've literally just made an incremental game right there you go there's our amount this is how much it gives us and this is how much we're getting per second if you want to make this even better you can add like a bunch of microtransactions to the game if you want to so yeah like i said before babies can make this so unless you're like two years old or something you could probably make this okay so yeah if i do end up making my own version of some incremental game i am filling it with microtransactions so much bro i'm gonna make a like a ten thousand dollar robux game pass that just gives you like one cosmetic or something but yeah if you actually like my teaching style and you want to get more of this uh premium content then and I do have a course, which you can find linked in the description and the pinned comment. The course is paid, but like it has a free preview. So you can just say, you know, preview the course for free before deciding if you want to buy it, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, bro, uh, do subscribe because I think 100k would be pretty cool to get. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.